Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. This is the bare minimum algebra series. Today we're going to only talk about six simple number systems. These are the common six that you will encounter. There are definitely a lot more in a more complex math, but right now these six are the ones that you really need to know. It's going to be natural and counting numbers, integers, rational numbers, real numbers, and irrational numbers. And there's a specific reason I wrote it out this way. Let's talk about it. The first one is natural or counting numbers. It's been called both ways. Normally I see natural number and they have a symbol for that, which you don't have to worry about right now, right? But oftentimes also called counting numbers. And the counting number is more intuitive. It's basically numbers you use to count objects, items, whatever you want, right? One, two, three, four, 1,000, 5,000, so on and so forth. It keeps on going forever. That is the natural or counting numbers. The next one is the integers. This is where it gets a little more interesting and a little more complicated. Now, natural numbers, you really can't do much. You're just counting and you're tallying things up. Now, integers have two addition in terms of its variation from natural and counting numbers. It has the number zero, so you can actually start from nothing. And they, some book call it the opposite, basically all the negative numbers as well. So you have all the negative one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. You have your zero and all of a sudden you have all of the natural or counting number, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. So that's the integers. Now we have the rational numbers. And for those of you guys, there is a more precise definition. However, the best way to remember this at the moment is that they're basically numbers that can be written as a fraction. Keyword can be. Sometimes you won't see them as a fraction. That does not mean that it's not a rational number. So one half, negative three or four are examples. Seven, even though it, it looks like just a whole number, a, a natural number, integers, however you want to put it, this is also a rational number because you can actually write it as seven over one, so on and so forth. Negative five, same thing. Even though right now when you look at it, it is not a fraction. You can write it as a fraction. Therefore, it is a rational number as well. So you guys can sort of guess the next one, irrational numbers. Basically, it is the reverse of rational numbers. So if the rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction, then the irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. Now there's a bunch of them, but the common ones are square root two, square root three. Now don't get this confused. Not all square roots are irrational numbers. It just happens to be that square root two and square root three are irrational numbers. And these are just examples. You have pi as well, which is the common, I guess you could say, number used to work with circles. And then you have E as well, the common number used to work with logarithms. So these are examples of irrational numbers, numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. So supposedly the last one is real numbers. Now real numbers is this all encompassing, I guess you could say group. It includes all the natural counting numbers, it includes the integers, it includes the rational numbers and the irrational numbers. So it's all encompassing. Now in algebra, most likely you'll be working in one of these four groups hence inside the real number group as well. Now, there are six, and I just wanted to briefly mention, because guess what, most of the time you're gonna be working in this, and the last one is actually the complex numbers. Complex numbers. And this is just to let you guys know that it exists right now, most likely if you're working with basic algebra, you won't touch this or you'll rarely touch this. This is when you're working with what is called imaginary numbers. Numbers that are really, doesn't really fall under this category, like you're taking a square root of a negative number, which normally doesn't make any sense, right? That's an example of complex numbers. So just to let you know, that's why there's six simple, I guess this shouldn't be called simple, but there's six simple number system that you will normally encounter. Real numbers include these four total, five, and a different set, which is complex numbers. So like I said, it's most likely gonna be like negative one, negative two, or square root of them, and so on and so forth. So a majority of the square root of negative numbers would fall under the complex number category. Now, let's talk about the structure of this. Ignoring the complex numbers, we're just looking at real numbers. Real numbers are all encompassing of these four groups. So I want you guys to notice something about these particular three. 
let's just draw a line to separate it. It's starting to get a little messy. These particular three, okay? Now, notice that the nat natural or counting number is one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. There's also, some people argue there's the whole number system, which is just zero, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. So yes, there's that too. Um, like I said, there's a bunch more like granular detail, but these are the six simple ones. Integers encompass all of the natural and counting numbers. So it includes the natural and counting numbers, but it has zero and all the negative numbers. So any one of these numbers, for example, one, two, three, four, five, will fall under the category of natural and counting numbers, but it can fall under the category of integers as well, right? However, the negative numbers can fall under the categories of integers, but will not fall under the category of natural or counting numbers. So certain numbers can be in multiple group. Certain numbers might just be stuck on one group. The key is to know the difference. The difference between these two, negative and zero. The difference between this guy and these guys is that there are fractions in there, whereas these guys, these all numbers that can be written as a fraction, but that doesn't mean that every single fraction belongs in integers or natural counting number. So these guys can be encompassing. However, this guy right here, irrational numbers, doesn't belong in any of these group, right? Guess what? If it happens to be a number that cannot be written as a fraction, it's not gonna be a rational number, right? And these are all whole numbers which can be written as a fraction. So it can't be belong in integers or it can't belong in counting or natural numbers as well. So this one is all by itself. These guys can intermingle with each other. So I want to clarify that. All right, so there you have it. These are the six simple number system that you will most likely encounter in your studies of math. You have your natural counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. You have your integers. Basically, it's all the negative counting numbers, opposite counting numbers, however you want to describe it, right? All the negative numbers, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, five, so on and so forth, the number zero, and all the positive or whole counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Then you have your rational numbers, which are basically any numbers that can be written as a fraction. The key is can be. It might not be in the form of a fraction, but if it could be written as a fraction, it's still a rational number. Then you have your irrational number, which are the ones that cannot be written as a fraction. You have this whole encompassing thing, which is real number group. And then you have the opposite of that, which is complex number. And for your sake, complex numbers are at this time, most likely you're gonna encounter is just square root of negative numbers. So hopefully this clarifies this a bit. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.